Hi, my name is Matt. I'm a writer at Hackaday, and today we're going to do a hackerspace tour. This time around, we're going to check out Pasadena City College and see what their fab lab looks like. So let's check that out. So hi, my name is Sandra Perez. I'm a PCC student, and I will show you the PCC fab lab. So this area is basically uh, the workstation of a fab lab where design tech pathway uses along with the engineering club, along with machine shop, engineering department. Everyone comes here and work any project physically uh, to use any machines here. Uh, some of the engineering students are at the rate, uh, our center race. So these are the cars, and prototypes, and finals that they have been working on for um, the whole summer. And yesterday it was the during the competition of the race, the last day. These and are uh, air ventilate for the laser cutter. Uh, before we had an air ventilate outside, but it was causing too much toxic for people who were just walking past by. So we finally got two ventilators. And the purple one's the older one, so this one's the newer laser cutter. And then right here is the machine shop where mostly people who have taken machine shop are allowed to use it or has an instructor visual in it. So the chainsaw, the CNC is what mostly students use to use the computer lab. So anything they want to do, this is, this is the machine they mostly use to use the computers. And then the lathes, not much students use it because most of them have been taken the machine shop except the older engineers. So we also got to talk with the Design Technology Pathway Director. Let's see what she had to say. Hi, I'm Deborah Bird and I'm the Director of the Design Technology Pathway and this is our Fab Lab. We're a program here at Pasadena City College, uh, an innovative program based on new technology. We're preparing students for the wide range of design, fabrication, technology uh, careers for the future. So uh, the model that we're using is one really based on developing collaboration and teamwork. Uh, the students come in, they work on project-based learning, so they're solving real problems in, for, in the real world. So for example, the models for visually impaired students for campus maps, etc. Um, the goal is to have the students develop the skills of collaboration and communication, soft skills, um, and also to develop um, a lifelong learning approach to technology. So the technology is taught not as a standalone element, but more as uh, an integral part of the design and problem solving process. Uh, our students uh, come from a wide range of backgrounds. We're primarily working with incoming high school students, but we're increasingly expanding our model to include community access to the Fab Lab, and work experience uh, opportunities uh, that are also problem-based. So our students can come in and expect integrated academics, math, English, college success. We use a series of stackable credentials that move towards transfer. So students can anticipate coming in and getting real-world work skills right from the very beginning um, that can then increasingly pay off as the students move up and transfer to four-year and and further um, educational opportunities. Now one of the projects that Deborah was talking about was a map for the blind and we wanted to find out a little bit more about this project so we asked a few students what it was like working on it. So let's find out what that is about. So on the top version you see you see uh, the first prototype that we did. It's a uh, we use um, no, and, uh, if you see it like this so we used wood as the, the back because we thought the plastic was a little bit too weak. But we found out that the plastic was well was pretty strong. So so the issue was um, the weight. And we also um, had people had uh, visually impaired people read it, and they seemed to like the texture. They seemed to like the doorway, the you know all the stairs. They can they can read all that. The only issue is um, they wanted us to change the ramps here, the U. And also, um, what else? The triangles. The triangles here. They wanted they they wanted this to be a bathroom. And also, um, the the letterings were confusing. And then some of the brails were a little mixed up. So on this uh, final product, we we changed the ramps here. 
We also um, simplify the, the, the letters here. And we also changed this to an arrow, and the restroom became a circle and a triangle. What I found m most challenging about this project was was the design element, was like, was trying to step out of a visual world, trying to step out of a sighted world, and, and really trying to be in the footsteps of the visually impaired. It's like, how do these how do these textures translate to visually impaired people? Um, trying to understand scale. Thankfully, we, we we have the disabled students program here on campus, and uh, we went to them for a lot of help and showed them um, our models. And but yeah, it was very very interesting just stepping out of the realm and just imagining what it would be like to experience a space without without vision. From the looks of it. It seems that PCC is bringing together an awesome combination of tools and resources and education techniques. But where are they getting the money for this? Our funding model is based on a series of grants that we've received both from the state and federal levels. We started with a very small in-house grant uh, from the Innovation Fund at Pasadena City College and that bought our very first piece of equipment which was a laser cutter and that was about three years ago and since then we've been really fortunate we were awarded a Title V grant um, because we are a Hispanic serving institution uh, about 45 percent of our students are uh, Hispanic we have a lot of students who are first-time college students uh, and also we have a lot of students who are coming in with major financial obstacles, so we provide a lot of wraparound services through this grant, including, including tutoring, uh, mentoring, um, we have a college success course that's part of a structured pathway, the students have priority enrollment, so they get access to the classes they need when they need them. Uh, and we also provide lab facilities and the technology that you see around is intended for student use and the Fab Lab is intended to create this community which the students really need. They need a place that is their own in order to really um, have a, a meaningful college experience. We know that if students can persist through the first couple of semesters, if they get to 30 units of credit, they are much more likely to complete their degree at the AA level and to move on to transfer. Um, we've also recently been awarded two additional grants at the state level through the Career Pathways Trust. One is in advanced manufacturing and that will be in collaboration with Long Beach Community College. And the other, uh, for which we are, P PCC is the fiscal lead, is the um, Career Pathways Trust Grant for Information Communication Technology. And that covers a broad range of technologies all the way from entertainment, arts, media, through to computer science. Um, this, is, this grant is part of a much larger consortia with eight different community colleges and 16 high schools. So the funding model is, is great. We have assured funding for the next four to five years, uh, but we intend to increasingly institutionalize the costs of running this program through entrepreneurial activities, through work experience for the students. Um, and so all of that is built into the financial models of these grants as we move forward. So that was our Hackerspace tour. Hope you enjoyed it and look for the next one.